Well, hello everyone. Today's story is Never Let a Dinosaur Scribble, written and illustrated by Diane Albert. And with that, let's get right into it. Never Let a Dinosaur Scribble. Let's see what kind of mischief he gets up to today. I recently got a pet dinosaur. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. And everyone keeps telling me, never let a dinosaur scribble. Why would anyone say such a thing? I mean, dinosaurs are so strong and powerful, so why can't they scribble? I thought, if I gave him just one crayon, what could go wrong? Well, I'll tell ya, he took off running towards the wall. We don't scribble on walls, only on paper, I yelled. Thank goodness my dinosaur has a short attention span. Just before he was going to scribble on the wall, he noticed a couple of stones instead. He started to scribble on one of the stones, which was great, but there was just one problem. He couldn't really see the scribble at all. I could tell he had another idea. He went to grab the paint! This wasn't gonna end well. But surprisingly, it didn't make as big of a mess as I thought. He just sat quietly and painted his little stone, and it turned out awesome! But then he got another idea. He wanted to paint dinosaur-sized stones! It didn't take long before he was rolling boulders into the room, one after another. It had become the biggest rock pile I had ever seen, and the way he painted the rocks was truly extraordinary. But you couldn't see my floor or my bed anymore. I had to find a place for this rock pile and quick. And then I heard a noise down the hall. This was it. I was going to be in so much trouble. I popped my head out of the door. My mom was standing right there. Before my mom could say anything, I started to explain the mess she was about to see. Well, it all started when I heard to never let a dinosaur scribble, but I had to find out why. Then he ran towards the wall with it, but thank goodness he got distracted with some small stones and started scribbling on them instead. But he still couldn't see the scribble at all, so he got some paint and he loved it so much that he got bigger stones, giant ones even, and it made a big mess and, and I'm sorry. My mom peeked around the corner and smiled. You didn't make a mess. You've made some spectacular stone art. When I turned around, there was just a little pile of stones on my table. No huge boulders and no gigantic rock pile, but still some of the best art ever. All this time, people wanted to stop dinosaurs from scribbling. It could be because they try and draw on walls or make a gigantic rock pile. But if my dinosaur had never scribbled, he would never have learned how to make this amazing stone art. So next time you hear, never let a dinosaur scribble, just remember, all great art starts with a scribble, and even dinosaurs have to start somewhere. The end. I love that story, and I love what the dinosaur made. Let's make some art of our own. Come on, I'll show you how. Okay, so what you're going to need is a canvas, or some watercolor paper, or some thick cardstock, some water, some painter's tape, watercolors. Now I have watercolors in a tube. You can use whatever watercolors you have. That's not a problem. And a paintbrush. I use a tray underneath mine just to keep everything neat. So let's get started. So first things first, I put my watercolors on a plate like this just because mine come in a tube. Mine are a little different than probably the ones you have, but they're pretty, they're pretty much the same. And I'm going to use blue, green, purple, orange, yellow, and red for mine. You can use whatever colors you want. And first thing first, we're just going to take our painter's tape and we're going to put it on our canvas. Now again, I'm using a canvas. You can use a sheet of watercolor paper. You can use the cardstock, whatever you have. It totally works. You just want to make sure that it's thick enough that it's not going to rip when you take the painter's tape off. What's important to remember is that wherever you put the painter's tape, there's going to be no paint underneath it. So that part's going to remain white. So if you want to create a design with it, um, some people make hearts with it, smiley faces. I'm just going to put some lines on it to make a geometric shape. So like I'm covering up the corner of my canvas, just like that, to make a little triangle on the top that's going to say white. And what you really want to do is press down the edges to keep the watercolors from going underneath it. If it does go underneath, it's not a huge deal. You can always paint over that section with another color to hide those marks, or you can always just go over with a marker and make it like a border. What you really want to do is make sure you really press down the edges of that when you get started. Now again, there's no real rule for this. I'm just kind of going as I want. 
Now the reason I use watercolor for this particular project is because it dries a little bit faster and is a little more forgiving than acrylics or oils. As you can see, here's a sample I did earlier today and as you can see, some of that watercolor did get underneath but you can easily just go over that with a marker and hide it if you want to. I personally like how it looks. I'm just gonna put the last two pieces on. I kind of made like a zigzag out of this. And just to have some fun. Okay, so first things first, we're actually going to paint our canvas, our watercolor paper, whatever you're using, with some water first to help the watercolor spread a little better. Now I would skip this step if you're using cardstock because it's just going to make it wet and it's not going to really help. But to prep the watercolor paper or canvas if you're using either of that, just do a nice thin layer, even layer of water over the entire canvas. Make sure when you are painting, whether it's with water or with the paint, that you are painting away from the tape. You don't want to brush towards the tape only because that kind of encourages the watercolors to get underneath there and we don't want that to happen. So with a lot of our other projects, I strongly encourage you guys to start with your lightest color first and just kind of go from there. And we're just gonna speed right through here. I'm starting with yellow and I'm just going right along our tape barriers. And of course, like I said before, you can use whatever color you want you can use watercolor pencils for this. I think that looked really cool. You can use acrylic. Just remember that you have to wait until it dries before you can peel it up. Uh, you can use pastels with this. That would be really cool. Be almost like an Aurora Borealis effect. Uh, anything like that. Any kind of art supplies that you have, feel free to use them in this. I like using paint because it comes out with a little bit of a crisper line and you can blend it really well. So I'm just doing a really quick, almost geode pattern with these as I go through the rainbow. Now what I've seen really cool is people have done their initials and designed it alongside like their room. If you have purple room or you have blue room, you can do it in those colors, anything like that. If you get really fancy, you can make like characters out of the tape and make those an outline too. Those are really fun to do. This one is super simple and no two paintings done like this ever look alike. So I cannot wait to see what you guys look like. Now, if you do get pooling like I just did, it means you're just using a little bit too much water. You can just take your paper towel or your napkin, whatever you have, and just blot it and then just go right back over it. There's no need to worry about that. Now, of course, you don't want the water to pull too much just because the colors might run more than you want them to. But if it does happen, just take your napkin or whatever you have and just blot that right up. Another trick is if you're working on your other colors and you realize that your first colors, your really light colors, are drying way lighter than you anticipated, don't worry about it. You can always go back in later and put another layer of your light colors on. Just make sure that your brush is really, really clean when you do so. Okay, and right here, I'm actually doing just that. I am blending out my orange and yellow a little bit more. Just going back in with a little more yellow. And that is it. So this is my almost final product, as I like to call it. And we're just gonna let it dry so we can take it off, nice and crisp. And snap. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes and it seems pretty dry. We're just gonna take the first corner off. If you want, you can always ask mom and dad for help with this. As you can see, right underneath is all white and it's gonna be all white underneath my Z2. And so we're just gonna quickly go through this and we're going to peel all this tape off. And as you can see here, some of that watercolor still get, did get underneath my tape, which is totally fine. We can always go over this later. So now I'm just gonna really quickly clean up. And here are my two final products. Now the first one I did just a simple X, and the second one I did kind of a Z or a lightning bolt pattern. I think they both get really cool. And here is an example of what it looks like when you fill in that white space with something else. I think both options are really cool and I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. 
I hope you guys have a great rest of your night and I hope to see you soon. Bye.